Welcome to the Developers Conference. It's so great to have you here, and thanks for joining me for this session. Uh, today, we're looking forward to talking about RFID and some of the opportunities that we have with RFID uh, and data services. Uh, Zebra has been uh, building a portfolio of data services that support our devices, and today we want to talk about how RFID devices, our FX readers, our ATRs, and others are being supported through uh, the Zebra data services offering. Zebra data services is something that was introduced a few years ago on the Zebra Savannah platform. If you've uh, attended other developer conferences, you've probably heard about Savannah and some of the ways that it connects the devices uh, to the cloud. If you have been working in the Zebra community for a few years, uh, maybe a decade, you've probably seen a slogan before that was, devices built by us, apps by you. It was really about how when we were working with, whether that be mobile computers and the compact framework way back in the day, or when we transitioned to Android uh, and we started releasing our new round of TC devices, how you could then, we gave you a platform that using a mobile computer, you could write an application that would solve a specific business problem. But Zebra makes more than just handheld mobile computers. We have printers, we have RFID readers, we have top of the line barcode scanners. All of those are platforms that you are capable of putting solutions on in addition to just putting an app on a mobile computer. One of the challenges for that is connectivity and how are you going to connect to those devices? There's traditional uh, con connectors uh, like we've seen before, whether that be through an SDK, uh, or an application that can connect to your printer, or connect to your RFID reader, uh, which is great for configuring it and setting it up. But as you go deeper into your solution, uh, we, you need a richer uh, set of connectors. That's where the cloud came in. We've seen how the cloud has, has grown over the last uh, decade plus uh, and the power that we get from having devices that naturally just connect to the cloud. And that's where Zebra started focusing on the data services offering. Uh, here you can see, we talk about how our printers are connecting. So if you wanna send uh, a print command or upload a font to a printer, you can do it from the cloud now. You don't have to use your traditional uh, PC-based application. Uh, if you want to learn about analytics, how are people using your mobile devices? Maybe you have 10, 20, 30,000 mobile devices deployed out there in the field, and you'd like to know things like how are their memory uh, how's the memory usage going or uh, what applications are most commonly run on that uh, device or how long does it sit on the charger? Analytics about that device that you can naturally get just straight through Zebra's cloud. With uh, barcode scanners, it's not just about the barcode that was read, but it's about the reason that barcode was there and where it was going in your business process. So uh, we don't just want the barcode reader that scans the barcode the fastest. We want to make sure that that data is usable in a secure fashion and available to you in near real time. RFID is no different. RFID is what we're going to focus on on this session. And we have connected our RFID readers, so our FX7500 and our FX9600 to the cloud. Uh, you can do that using Zebra Data Services and the, the feature set that we'll walk through here. The reason why we went on this endeavor, though, is because Connecting RFID readers uh, to systems of reality or, or to your end business solution hasn't always been easy. Wherever you deploy an RFID reader, you also had to deploy a Windows box, essentially. It could be a Windows server, maybe it was Windows 7. Uh, hopefully you're not still running Windows XP, but you ultimately had to have a server that had network connectivity. And sometimes that meant you could connect through VPN from your data center. Other times it meant you didn't have that sophisticated network solution and you had to have it on-prem. Ultimately, it was the, the computer that was processing the reads from the reader and then deciding where to go with that data. Now we've enhanced the readers so that they can do their own processing on device and then connect securely to the cloud to help you receive that operational data wherever you would like it. That package comes in a couple offerings. The first one is device management. If you set up a device, we hope that it runs for years and years without any uh, need for maintenance. But 
the reality is uh, network outages happen, uh, network configurations change, uh, perhaps your analytics mode that you want to use on the reader and what was working for you for the last couple of years, you'd like to advance to the next level of analytics. So you want to update it. The goal is to keep you off of planes, trains, and automobiles and for being able to do it right there from the terminal, such as I am here at my home today. If I want to connect with a reader uh, that is located in New York City, I'm in Minnesota myself, or maybe out in San Jose uh, on the other side, I can connect directly from my keyboard through the cloud and interact with that reader in a way that was doesn't require VPN access and, and doesn't require direct LAN connectivity. It's going through Zebra Savannah's secured cloud using standard REST APIs. We also have event subscription, meaning that just because I can manage a reader doesn't mean that that reader is going to be useful unless I'm getting that edge data. In Zebra, we I'll talk a lot about edge data. That one of that would be the barcode scan that we mentioned, right? You scan a barcode, you hear it. Or it could be that print, that, that the first time you print a tag, that tag has a, a value on it that could be a barcode. It could be embedded uh, with an RFID tag. It could even include some of our new temperature time sensors. So you know what was the, you know, what was the environmental state uh, as that product transferred uh, move through your supply chain or, or move through your business workflow. So we want to make sure that if you have uh, vent data from your reader, it's not just the ease of management, but the ease of the reason you put it there. Right? You want to sense the tags that are going through and you want to be able to receive that in your data center. So going back to what I mentioned on the previous slide, it's not just about having a server on-prem that's capable of interacting with the reader and running custom software there. It's really about getting the raw event up to your data center into your cloud where you can uh, to take action on that event. So we'll have device management. How do you manage the device and keep it running long term? A solution you put in place today, I presume you'd like to see running five years from now. And event subscription, meaning the events, the tag reads that are flowing through to making sure that they're landing in your data center where you can take action on them and create your custom solution. We added a third feature on top of that, though, which is analytics and reporting. Analytics and reporting gives you the benefit of not just being the sole place where the data lands. You can use Zebra and Zebra's cloud as a place to store your data, or you can use it as a backup, meaning that we're still going to forward it immediately to your system. Uh, but if your system goes down, you need to replay the data, you need access previously, or you want to do an audit, that data is available for you. So our challenge is uh, how do we get the Windows Server off-prem or how do we create data uh, uh, event flows where your data can easily land in your data center wherever you want it, anywhere on the globe? The way we do that is by replacing the traditional technology. So traditionally, every reader had a server like we talked about. Uh, it could connect to it, whether it be hybrid, hybrid cloud using VPN, whether it be on-prem. But ultimately, you were creating an application that was reading raw tag reads or was consuming raw tag reads, processing them, and then choosing what to do with them. In the new future, what we have now available for you on the FX readers is direct to cloud. So our reader is going to take care of all three of those planes. It has the management plane, meaning what mode is it reading in? Is it reading? Is it not reading? Do you need to control the LEDs? Uh, do you want to update, uh, change the GPO? A lot of options for how you manage what is physically happening on the reader. Uh, configuring its network address, uh, lots of options for it. It will show you the API set here in a little bit. It, it, it consists roughly of 13 APIs, or perhaps you're troubleshooting a reader and you don't know uh, what's going on with it. One of the latest updates to the Zebra Data Services for RFID is the ability to pull all of the syslogs from the reader, all of the radio packet logs, and to get that advanced uh, information so you know or can help work on troubleshooting what's going on with the reader without, again, having to get on the trains, planes, and automobiles. The data, too, is the most important part. We configure the reader, we maintain the reader for the purpose of getting data and, and, and taking action on sense data. So all of that data then flows up to the cloud without the need of, a, of an intermediate server and just sending on up through your particular read modes. 
So you may say, I know about FX Connect already. FX Connect does this, and it does. It does it great. In fact, we have several offerings uh, within Zebra, and they all have come with different tiers of service and different tiers of functionality based on your need. When we look at data services today, you can see how we've moved from FX Connect, which gives us our ability to see the tags uh, and to con uh, configure our antennas. But then we move it up a level to give us that remote reader management. So we're not worried about controlling the connectivity of the cloud. We simply pull it out of the box, we plug it in uh, to our ethernet cable, and we plug in our claim code to register that it is indeed our reader. It connects to the cloud and everything from there can be done uh, either using our developer portal or using the API uh, feature set that's available. So now I'd like to talk about what does that mean? How easy is it to connect your reader to the cloud? Uh, and if I do so, what do I get from it? So let's take a few moments here to do a little demo. I'm going to enroll my reader. I'm going to connect to it and show you how I can use the management API, such as getting the status of the reader, telling it to start reading or telling it to stop reading, or even toggling the LED. And then we'll look at event subscription and how subscribing to events on the reader give you the opportunity then to receive that data when an RFID tag comes within a view of the reader, how it will then get sent up to the cloud, processed by Zebra uh, Savannah, and then sent on to the data center or logged in the data lake uh, so it can be retrieved using analytics and reporting. Let's take a look at this data services for RFID demo and some of the advantages we get when we enroll our FX reader into the cloud, how we can manage it from anywhere, and most importantly, how RFID read events make their way from the reader to the cloud and into our data centers. The first thing to do to enroll a reader is to go to developer.zebra.com. This is the easiest way if you're an engineer just creating your first solution. So if you go to developer.zebra.com, you're gonna see a My Account or a Register link here. If you haven't registered yet, it's really easy to do so. Enter your email address, confirm it, and an account will be provisioned for you. Once you have an account, you'll wanna to talk to your Zebra Data Services rep in order to enroll in the Data Services for RFID program. In this case, you could enroll as a pilot or as a full purchase product. I've enrolled as a, pro, uh, as a pilot, so I'll show you what that menu option looks like. If we go to products and platforms down to Zebra Data Services, we'll see that we have a couple of menu options here. When you're enrolled in the data services for RFID, you'll get the subscriptions point. If you don't have the subscriptions menu yet, talk to your sales rep. But it really starts with the apps. The app is where your API key and secret exist. So once you're enrolled in the program, you'll see cloud management for RFID. In this case, I'm part of a pilot. So I see the pilot program here. If I click on it and roll down, scroll down, I'm going to see my key in secret. That's what I'm going to use for the APIs to interact with it. But it goes beyond just the interacting with the APIs because your device needs to be connected first. Let's take a look at what it takes to connect the device. If I go to my devices list, I'll see all of my connected devices. In this case, I have none, so let's go ahead and add one. Now, you can use many options. You can connect with your printer, you can connect, connect with your reader. Your printer will allow you to send print jobs from the cloud to your printer, but in this case, we're really interested in read events from the reader to the cloud. I'll get a claim token. That claim token will allow me to enroll my reader. So with the claim token in hand, I'll copy it and go connect to my reader. Here you can see I've connected to my reader directly. I'm going to go to the Communications tab and to Cloud. From Cloud, I'll paste in my enrollment token, and in just a couple seconds, my reader will be ready, ready to interact with. I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's go to Postman. Now, don't worry, this Postman collection is available in open source uh, on GitHub, so you can download it and use it yourself. One of the advantages of doing that is I can get the status of my reader. Here you can see that we know what antennas are connected, the CPU and memory that's there, and if it's active or inactive. In this case, I can see my radio is not reading yet. So now that I've got my reader connected and I can interact with it, let's talk about getting read events from there. 
Read events, when a tag is sensed, will then be forwarded on from the reader to the cloud and onto your data center if you subscribe to a subscription. In this case, we're going to need to create one because I don't have one. So let's add a subscription. We'll name it DevCon appropriately for today. And let's go down to the web link. Uh, one of my favorite test sites is uh, webhook.site. So I'm going to take this URL, copy it, and I'll paste it into our here, uh, into our webhook link. I can also choose what devices it applies to. In this case, I'm just going to leave it applying to all my devices. If I check this, it would only apply to this device. If you leave them unchecked, it will apply to all devices. Filters and JQ transformation are covered in a different talk, so please Feel free to uh, participate there. Robin would be happy to give you the details on how you can go deeper into filtering and transformation. For now, I just want all events that are sensed by my reader to be sent to my webhook. So now that I have a webhook in place, I can go ahead and put a tag in front of my reader. Uh, to do that, let me just shrink this window here. Here's my webhook site. We would see an event show up. So let me grab a tag here ever so quickly and wave it in front of the reader. Oh, uh, tag read is not showing up. One of my favorite mistakes. Let's go back to our webhook and let's tell it to start reading. If a device is not reading, obviously there would be no events flowing in. So if I tell it to start reading, I'm going to get a 200 OK here. Now I know it's in read mode. Let's go back to our site. I'll wave a tag. And now with the tag in front of the reader, you can see that it shows up ever so quickly, near real time, generally sub-second. Now, a couple things I want to talk about here. We can see the EPC of the tag was read in. So we have on our event, we have our timestamp. This is the timestamp of the reader. So you want to make sure the reader is synced with an NTP server, preferably, so you don't have time drift and then the EPC tag that was read. But in addition to that, one of the advantages coming to the cloud is that we can do analytics and decoding on it. Our analytics will tell us a few more pieces of information, but really here, the decode is what's valuable. In this case, it was a tag encoded in a GS1 format. That GS1 format was a GIAI standard, so it means it has an AI of 8004. That's the asset identifier. So we can see our asset tag value is right here. So by sending your event to the cloud, you get not only the basics, such as the timestamp and the tag ID and the RSSI value and the antenna, but you can also get a decoded value of what does that tag represent. Now let's take a little deeper link into how we get our Postman collection set up. I hope you guys enjoyed that demo. Uh, definitely shows you how easy it is to connect your reader to the cloud. Just unbox it, plug it in, give it a claim token, and now you've got full ability to control that reader securely from the cloud. But let's talk about what it takes to set up your development environment to do some of this too. The first thing I want to encourage is when you go to the developer portal, developer.zebra.com slash APIs, uh, you'll see the data services for RFID uh, tile, one of the many APIs that are available from Zebra Savannah. In that uh, tile there, you'll see three sets of APIs. One that talks about the reader management, the second, the event subscription, and of course, thirdly, the uh, third, the uh, analytics and reporting uh, cloud data storage APIs that you can pull from. They all come with Postman collections available for you. So you don't have to build a Postman collection from the swaggers that are being displayed there. You don't have to build it up from raw. You just uh, go ahead and download it. They're open source on GitHub, available at github.com slash zebra devs. Um, but we would recommend once you download that collection, we do use environment variables. Those environment variables just make it really easy to use your auth token uh, or to uh, set the reader that you're wanting to interact with. Lots, lots of options there for just the ease of using the collection of around 15 APIs there for your use. In addition to downloading the, uh, downloading the Postman collection, 
We also want to encourage you to then start interacting with your reader using the get status and the send uh, the get status command. The get status is the easiest way to check is your reader online and are you able to interact with it. You can then from there start doing things like flashing the uh, API or the LED light using the API. So one of our APIs includes the app LED. Go ahead and make it flash. You can have it flash for 30 seconds, for a minute. You can have it say stall, say stay solid, excuse me. Um, lots of options for uh, just kind of tinkering. One of the things I'd be weary of is tinkering with your network configuration. Of course, that is something that's available through the API, but uh, if you give it an invalid network uh, network setting, then you're not going to be able to communicate with the reader anymore. So use that one, uh, you know, with advanced judgment. After you've got your reader connected, you're successfully interacting with it uh, through Postman and the APIs, you're getting the status of it, uh, for instance, or you're toggling the app uh, LED or maybe the GPO, uh, depending on the use case that you're interested in. It's time to tell it to start reading. So if you send the uh, start command to uh, send event tags up to the cloud, they will land in the cloud. And if you're registered, will be stored in the data lake. But if you don't have a webhook configured, they really don't have anywhere to go. So it's important that you then use the subscription page on the developer portal. So again, you can go to developer.zebra.com slash APIs. And along one of the borders there, you will, or one of the menu items, you'll see that you can hit the subscriptions page is where you can edit uh, your subscriptions for your reader. By default, there are no subscriptions. So you'll need to add one from the start or you can edit an existing one. When you create your subscriptions, you can create it for all your readers. You can check boxes to just include a particular set of your registered readers. But with that subscription in place, you now have the opportunity to send events or, or Savannah has the opportunity to know where to send those events to uh, as they arrive. As I mentioned, if you don't have a subscription page, but you have enrolled in the analytics and reporting, all of that data is being stored in the Savannah Data Lake and will be available for you to retrieve using basic REST APIs. But if you want to retrieve those events in near real time, that's generally sub-second, but it does depend on the na uh, network latency between your reader and the cloud and your cloud and the cloud and your endpoint. Uh, but basic network latency aside, you're going to get those events in sub-second. So if I grab an API, uh, an RFID tag, you know, here's one of my favorite ones here, and I wave it in front of my reader, my webhook is going to receive that uh, event in generally sub-second time. So if you have that subscription enabled, if you put your reader into start read mode and you wave your tag in front of your antenna, they're going to see those, you will see those events arrive within your webhook relative short time. Note that, uh, of course, a reader will only post when it's in read mode. I've made that mistake myself. I'd call it a rookie mistake, but it's not. It's really just one of those that uh, I think we all make where we start waving tags in front of antennas. We can't understand why it's not uh, displaying correctly. And we never told the reader to start reading. It doesn't know to report the tags to the cloud. And of course, then Savannah doesn't know to forward them onto your webhook. So just a pro tip there. Uh, remember that when you've got everything configured, you've got your reader, you can connect to it, you can talk to it, you've got your subscription enabled, you know that your webhook is there and waiting to catch that first tag read. Don't forget to put your reader in start mode. So with that uh, mentioned uh, and a quick walkthrough here and a little demo, I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the information shared here. Uh, please don't hesitate to hit the join button and join a Q&A session that will be coming up here in just a moment. Thanks again for your time today.